Hello and welcome to Macmacus Studios. This is another video on, in my M32 edit series. Today we're looking at the gate and dynamic section of the channels. So let's get right into it. So let's start off left to right as we do. First you've got your active button which is essentially an enabling or bypass button. You can turn the gate the gate on and off. Um, so we'll have it on obviously. Here it shows you the graph of the gate. You can change the threshold. So essentially what a gate does is once uh, it sort of blocks quiet sounds from making it through into the mixer. So if a sound is in this case below um, negative 58 decibels, then it's not going to, then the gate is gonna keep it muted. And it's not gonna make it through um, and start metering or into the channel at all. And no sound will pass through it. So you can bring this down to the point that you think you'll have trouble, or right up, whatever you want. And then that, once it hits that point, it'll start letting it in. Then we've got the range setting. So this setting, you can bring it down and it's sort of, you'll see it, so I bring this right up. You'll see this change a lot more. And what this does is it means it can sort of alleviate the, if you have it all the way up to 60, then it's just going to cut it right off once it reaches below our threshold. If you have it a bit lower, then it won't necessarily jump right off. It means if it's a little bit, it means it'll let some sound slightly through, but a lot quieter. Hopefully that makes sense. It's the basic explanation. Um, over here, we've got our attack, hold, and release. These are very common among most sort of effects like this. So you've got your attack, which is how long it takes the gate to grab the sound and start affecting it. So usually we keep that pretty short, especially on a gate. Then you've got the hold, which is the minimum amount of time that the gate is open for. So uh, it, it stops, if you have a high hold, it stops the gate from just opening and closing all the time. It just keeps it, see it sort of changes the time there. Then you get release, which is how long it takes for the gate to slowly close again. So you can change that and it'll affect. So if you have it really short, then the gate will sort of slam shut again. If you have it a bit longer, the gate will slowly close to slowly diminish sounds that are below the gate level. You have a pretty short attack, so it lets sound through as soon as it hears something above the threshold. Here is a sort of a more advanced complex section. It's about side chaining. Now this again is pretty common to other things like the compression and dynamics. So what you can do here is if channel two hits a certain point, then the gate for channel one will open. It's very, it can be very useful. It's sometimes used uh, on like a kick drum and you'll have like a really low frequency oscillator going then if the kick drum gate opens, then uh, it'll let the sound, if the kick drum hits and makes a sound, then it'll let the oscillator through just when the kick drum's hitting. So that it adds that really low buzz but only when the kick drum's hitting. That's something that I've used in my studio work, something I learned uh, from other mixers uh, and engineers, but that's one way you can use sidechain gating. I'm also gonna touch on compression in this video, because uh, it's got a lot of the same thing. So again, we got the same active button, then we got the graphic, got the threshold that determines. This time, it sort of works in the opposite way to a gate where the top changes. Have that change, how quickly uh, it compresses it. So the ratio of sound normally and sound being compressed. You turn that right up so that it almost, so that it just flatlines the sound. 
So essentially something's coming through loud and then sort of hits a point, you're like, look, we don't want it continuing going. Continuing, that's very loud, so we want to bring it down at a, at a heavier ratio so it doesn't, so it's not as loud and isn't hitting as high. This means that I can sort of, as the words go, compress the sound, bring it closer together, so you're low, you can boost the whole signal when your lows aren't as low and your highs aren't as high. Now this is quite a steep angle, I usually you wouldn't have it that high, harsh. Then you can change at what point the sound is then affected. Uh, you then have uh, these uh, knee settings to determine sort of how soft the knee is on the change there. You can see it's quite soft there and a very hard, sharp knee there. So that's what those settings are about. And then you have some makeup gain afterwards to sort of boost the signal after it's going through compression. Now this, although it says gain, is um, volume. And if, if you want to hear more about that, go back to my uh, second video in the series where I sort of discussed the difference between gain, volume, and trim, and, and I've put some articles in that video. Um, so go playlist all the videos in the description, go check that video out. Uh, again, here we've got the same compression settings. Attack, how quickly it grabs the sound after it, after it goes over the point. It's too loud, and then the hold, how long it, for the minimum compression time, and then the release, how quickly it lets it go once it drops back down again. And side chaining again. Side chain compression, um, useful as well. Similar way, chain one instrument to another. Very good. So that was uh, those two sections about gait and dynamics. I hope you've learned lots from those. Next week, I'll be talking about EQ, or equalizer, and lots of stuff about frequencies, cutting and boosting, and recommendations there. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions or you wanna check out the playlist in the description to see the other videos in this series. Subscribe and put on the notification bell so you're notified when I upload more videos in this series or other series. And, uh, Go to some audio.